Here's an introduction to sandboxes and how to build them. Uh, what you do is you go to Setup, and uh, sandboxes are great because you can use them to test applications or training or anywhere you'd, you'd rather not be using live data but want to be using a, a replica of, of, of the database, um, copy of the database. So in this case, what I'm seeing is, is that I have 30 developers available, one pro developer I've used by available copy, and I have a, a full copy. I don't have a full copy available either. So this is my partial copy down here, just so you see it. Um, if we look at the license process, this just is a quick overview, and you might take a look at the current numbers. But a, a developer sandbox is, a, is it, let's say, 200 megs. Um, pro Ghost is five times bigger, and a partial is even five times that. What you're also seeing is, is that uh, the sandbox template is required if you build uh, a, a partial. Um, so when we're here, uh, we have the option of building a, a sandbox template. So if you haven't done that and you haven't built your partial, you should. Um, so there's plenty of, uh, of additional background. If you click Help, it'll walk you through um, how to create sandbox templates. And this can be fairly detailed because it depends on what objects you actually want to capture. So if, for example, we select all of them, uh, that can be quite a few objects, um, especially when we kind of drag through it, right? And so that, that limits the amount of information that you can pull across. If you select uh, an object, what that does to remove it from the all list it shows you the additional objects that are, have uh, de dependencies that would need to be managed. So I'm going to say cancel that. Uh, the other thing is is that uh, the name has to be an alphanumeric, uh, just 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 letters. So there's no spaces involved there. Um, so I'm going to cancel that just because we don't need one to build a, a standard uh, developer. And so what I'm going to do is to go and say let's uh, let's build a a, a new sandbox. And what I'm going to do is to call it um, uh, training. And I'm going to make it a, uh, a developer. And I'm going to say next. And I'm not going to worry about my Apex class at this point. I'm going to create it. And so what you're seeing is it's pending uh, in queue. And so this isn't something that happens quickly. So let me come back and, and check in, and I'll let you know how long it takes to build. So after about a minute, you can now see that we have uh, it's, it's processing, and it's pending, and we have some chunk of it done. So this is kind of a minute in. I'll let you know once it's finished. So after 13 minutes, I uh, started this at 10 and 13 now, so uh, we now have a completed um, sandbox, and this is developer sandbox. And so if we look at our, uh, into your email, you'll, fly, you'll find a, uh, a message like this uh, that shows that uh, we now have a, tr a sandbox ready to go. And so we... You save this message because this is a really helpful one because it has the link that drives you straight to it. If you ever need uh, to look at it again, the uh, documentation for creating a sandbox has this information that shows that um, you can append the sandbox name to the end of a username um, and basically use the same um, password to get in. Um, but it's certainly simple to be able to, to go directly from uh, the sandbox. And so in this case, this is training. And so you'll see it in a black box here that shows that's the case. Um, and what we're able to look at if we look at contacts and we say, let's look for recent contacts. Uh, there aren't any. But if I look at the other one that I built, which was the test, and I say, look at those added last week, we actually have information there. 
So that's because that was a partial sandbox. Uh, but in the meantime, now what we have is, is sandboxes we can work with both for training and for applications. And so now we can uh, move on to uh, installing an app from the App Exchange.